Okay, I started. Whoever's timing. All right. So my name is Elizabeth Wheeler, and I will be presenting on editing in a designer's world. So if you're an editor, your job, and to some extent this includes design, focuses a lot on the reader and trying to explain things and get information to the reader rather than just getting information out in general. So the goal of this presentation will be to explain how that relationship relates to a designer's job. So first of all here we have some excellent example of very terrible design. I won't spend too much time explaining why. <laughs> it's, uh, it's uh, fairly self-explanatory. So the fact is that you know that this is really bad design. You know just from looking at it how terrible it is. And this is because design is everywhere. This really is a designer's world. There has never been a better time to be a designer. Because the fact is, design has been a huge part of the world basically forever, ever since the first cave paintings, the first manuscripts, which are the first example of text and images being together. It's always been that way. So for that reason, you have to understand design in order to succeed in general. So this presentation will, will talk about the relationship between an editor and, and a designer and how that needs to work in order to actually convey information. Topography and how, the, how important that is for conveying information as well. Organization and how to keep that so that you can be understood. And then legibility will be a big part of it because that's a lot of why design is important. So the relationship between an editor and a designer. This quote from Eric Speakerman, who's a great guy, by the way, I love him. Um, basically, anyone looking at a printed message will be influenced immediately whether or not they actually start reading the text. And so this is why the editor really has to respect the designer because their work will influence the reader before they actually even get to everything, all of the hard work that you've done. So you have to actually because sometimes in those readings, the, edi the, the editors talking maybe weren't the most respectful toward designers saying things like they're just making it look pretty and things like that. So the fact is you have to, you have to respect each other. So the reason for that is, that is because it influences the reader so much. It influences them immediately. A designer can make a page look like you want to read it, like you understand what it's about before you ever even start reading it. And so, despite the fact that editors might somewhat resent designers, or editors might be a little annoyed because they have to design, the fact is that they share a lot of the same assignments and the same jobs, and they even share the same tools as in they use the same programs when they're putting stuff together. So you really have to learn how to work together and one of the better ways that this works is to make sure that the designer is actually involved from the beginning of the process rather than just thrown in at the end and told, here's all of our text, make it look good. It's a lot better if they're involved at the beginning and then they actually know what the text is about and what they're trying to achieve. And then the editor can do a lot, more, a lot better job helping prioritize the information rather than having to actually do the design because, I mean, the more time an editor spends designing, the less time that they're spending actually editing the important texts. All right, so the next most important thing as far as getting the information across is topography. And so this is the most obvious way to affect the messages that you're getting across because text is composed of words, words are composed of letters, Letters, Carl Dare compares them to molecules because when you combine them one with another, each arrangement of <coughs> individual components in combination creates an entirely new result. And then, so the letters themselves can be expressed through different typefaces, which can be bold, can be italicized, can be different fonts, and that each one produces a different sort of result. In this way, we have Kierning, which relates to the fact that, I mean, type letters, letters are not all the same sort of shapes, so when you put them equal spacing from each other, they don't always look right, which is why you mess with the kerning in order to make something actually look better. Serifs, as we've discussed, serif and sans serif fonts, serif fonts are the ones that have the little tails on them, 
It is generally agreed that serif fonts are easier to read because they create a line that the reader can follow. There are people who think otherwise, though. But in general, it's just something to consider as far as improving legibility. And then fonts, something to consider is the fact that fonts come with emotional baggage because people know different kinds of fonts. People hate Comic Sans. People assume that Times New Roman is the best thing to use, but in general, you can get really tired of seeing Times New Roman over, over and over again. So you have to consider what kind of fonts to use and what variety of fonts to use. Newspapers especially can use um, their own sort of font in order to create a brand. And speaking of newspapers, they're also very good at this particular element because newspapers do a lot of, it looks like they're messy, but they're actually really organized because they stay on a grid. And so organization is where all the elements meet and work together. Because the principal form of function, function of form, <laughs> is to advance our understanding, the organization of the piece, keeps the listener idea in mind, follows development, growth, collaboration, fate. So organization is where you make sure that the reader can actually follow what's going on in the text. And this includes the framework of a page, the shape of the text itself on the page, and the visual punctuation, which is how you uh, make sure that the shape actually makes sense. So the framework of a page is the actual physical framework, which can be the cover of a book, the page of a magazine, or a web page. And this can have a big effect on people. Uh, Barry Call explains that the physical paratext has an influence on the sensations that a reader gets, but, I mean, regardless of what they're actually reading on. And so this is kind of important because it influences them whether or not they're thinking about it. And this leads to, on the actual page, the shape of the text has a lot to do with the white space, has a lot to do with where the white space goes among the text. And white space is interesting because it's a lot like in editing when you know to take words out rather than put word, add words back in. It's the same sort of idea as using white space in design to achieve that sort of effect. And the shape of the text is where you run into the matter of a grid, which can seem really restricting. But um, Speakerman, who I quoted earlier, talks about how the art of that is to make sure that the reader isn't taken out of the text by thinking about, oh, somebody had to purposefully design all of this. You have to make your design subtle so that they can appreciate reading without thinking about all the work that you took, put into designing it. And then there's visual punctuation within the text, which is generally accomplished with contrasts and how you organize the individual elements. And it's how you direct the reader through the page because, I mean, if you're looking at this, you know, you start at the top where the big text is and you go to the next bigger and you follow it through. And this is accomplished through contrast, through breaks in the text, through different sizes and things like that. And so once you have all these elements, you have to make sure that you keep them consistent throughout the entire thing so that the reader isn't taken out of the text by going, oh, that looks different than everything else. So you have to make sure that you stay consistent so that the reader can follow along and stay with the text. Because in the end, the reader is the most important person, both to the editor and to the designer. And this is why the editor and the designer have to actually get along with each other, regardless of whether this is an editing-focused world or a design-focused world. And that is it.